And thanks for staying up with us tonight. I'm Craig O'Neill and we're in countdown mode to the first day of school, but the Little Rock School District is still waiting to get its back to school list finished. Our Ashley Godwin explains. The Little Rock School District has almost everything they need for the first day of school, except enough Chromebooks and hotspots. They're still waiting for shipments. Not all of them are in yet. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thousands of students have received a Chromebook this week to do their learning from home. The goal is for every LRSD student to get a laptop and the chance they need to shift from in-class to virtual learning. But right now, there's not enough for everyone. We have enough uh, to meet the, all the uh, virtual student needs. And then um, when we receive our uh, last order of Chromebooks, we'll be able to uh, provide those devices to all of our in-person students. And the LRSD is still waiting for another shipment. They have not received any hotspots for those students who need internet connectivity. The hotspots are not in yet. No, no, we're waiting. Little Rock School Superintendent Michael Poor saying in a meeting on Thursday night that it's not just an LRSD issue, but a statewide issue. Everybody's run into the same issue there mm -hmm. and uh, wondering where they're at even though 500 from the state haven't arrived yet, so we're still in a holding pattern. The LRSD ordered 2,500 hotspots and district faculty will determine which students can have them. The shipments of those and the Chromebooks are expected to get here by mid-September. In Little Rock, Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. Ashley, thank you. Teachers, parents and organizations are still reacting to yesterday's announcement from the LRSD about a phased in approach for the first week of school. Members of Grassroots Arkansas and Central Arkansas DSA set up outside of the district's administration building this morning and one by one knocked on the door to look to uh, deliver a message. Their message, they say opening for in person instruction is a dangerous mistake that could lead to lives lost. You can read the district's full plan right now on THV11.com. THV11 is your back to school central and tomorrow morning on Wake Up Central, we're dedicating a special 30 minutes to getting your school questions answered. Dr. Ivy Pfeffer, the state's deputy education commissioner, joins our Rob Evans and Amanda Yeager live. You can text your questions right now if you want, 501-376-1111 and we'll get answers to as many as we can. That's tomorrow morning at 6.30 on Wake Up Central. It's a pleasant night around the region as we take a look at the satellite with temperatures. Clouds are trying to move in from Mississippi and Tennessee. Temperatures out there right now, upper 60s to low to mid 70s. And these clouds are producing some showers and storms still in the Mississippi, trying to move across the Mississippi River. So Chico County, Deshea County, maybe even Drew County and Ashley County. Don't be surprised if you see a shower out there through the overnight. This is all associated with the upper level disturbance that will bring the opportunity of a few showers and storms for eastern parts of the state to close up the work week on Friday. Here in Little Rock Metro, there's a slim chance we could see a pop up shower, but overall expect a mixture of sunny clouds. Temperatures warming up into the mid to upper 80s. I'll have more on that chance of rain and also talk about the potential of two hurricanes at the same time in the Gulf of Mexico next week. And just into the THV 11 newsroom, a development in the search for a missing Jackson County woman. The Jackson County Sheriff confirms they found Sydney Sutherland's cell phone tonight while searching near her home. Sutherland was last seen yesterday afternoon. She left for a run near State Highway 18. That's between Newport and Grubbs. Tonight, investigators are asking anyone who might have seen anything suspicious near exit 87 on Highway 67 to call the sheriff's office immediately. They hope to be able to pull information from her phone to help in their search. Sutherland is five foot three, weighs 103 pounds, and has brown eyes and blonde hair. Today marks one month since Governor Hutchinson's mask mandate went into effect in Arkansas, and 549 new cases of COVID-19 were reported today, and that's 180 less than yesterday. Meanwhile, our hospitalizations remain the same today, no more, no less than yesterday, but another 10 people have lost their lives to the virus. 
Tonight, there's a new map that hopes to show a better picture of the number of COVID-19 cases within the boundaries of Arkansas school districts. The new info comes from ACHI, and it's tracking new cases from the last 14 days. It then puts each district into a tier system, with green being the lowest risk and red being the highest. The map will be updated every week. The opioid crisis has not taken a break during the COVID crisis, so TSV 11 continues its efforts to help save a generation from drug addiction. Officials are concerned about how people with substance abuse disorders are coping with society locking down. THV 11's Roly Hoyt reports. They're lonesome, they're isolated, they're bored, um, they're stressed e economically or socially. That's a comprehensive summary of how so many of us feel, but particularly people dealing with addiction. When they get stressed, the one thing they know is getting high. They know exactly how they're going to feel. Psychologists and treatment professionals worried about this when the country started locking down. State drug director Kirk Lane asked for data. He got back some positives and negatives. The drug naloxone, or Narcan, has been a difference maker. And we realized that that Narcan really is that second or maybe third or fourth chance to get people to recovery, and we know that recovery works. Lane looked at data from the five months from March to July, both last year and this year. Law enforcement use of Narcan to save a life surged from 13 saves a month last year to 34.2 during the pandemic. Paramedic use went from an average of about 200 saves to 270. It's clear the need for Narcan is up, but here's the positive. Deadly overdoses dropped during these last five months from an average of 29 to 26.8. Another ripple effect of people being stuck at home, spring cleaning of medicine cabinets. While drug take back day got postponed, drug take back boxes like this filled up fast with thousands of pounds of prescriptions. I think people, like I said, in this epidemic are more health conscious. They're at home. They have time on their hands. So a lot of them are cleaning out their medicine cabinets. There are outstanding concerns as the pandemic wears on. Treatment centers cut back on taking in patients or many patients feared going into a congregate setting. Getting that part of the recovery plan will be key, but Lane says eyes are wide open. Uh, we're seeing, you know, with the naloxone administrations, we're seeing a lot more people overdose, but we're also seeing that we're there and prepared to deal with it. Roly Hoyt, THV 11 News. Joe Biden is officially his party's leader and its 2020 candidate for president, accepting the nomination on the final night of the Democratic National Convention. Natalie Brand has more from Wilmington, Delaware. By the dawn's early light. Night four of the Democratic National Convention belongs to Joe Biden as he accepts his party's nomination for president. His goal tonight, to lay out a positive vision for uniting a divided country and reach out to undecided voters. It matters that you have in your mind the family that you're trying to reach. The Biden family bond also on full display with Hunter and Ashley Biden introducing their dad and a tribute to Biden's son, Bo, who died from brain cancer five years ago. Joe Biden began attending Democratic conventions in 1972, but none has compared to this year's historic virtual convention with supporters having to find unique ways to show their enthusiasm during the pandemic. Some gathered in cars outside the Chase Center in Delaware. Supporters of President Trump also showed up in what's likely a preview of the upcoming general election season. Unity continued to be a theme for the Democrats as several former 2020 candidates stated their case for the Biden-Harris ticket. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris know the dignity of all working Americans. There are parents and patriots who want the best for us and our country. We must be the heroes of our generation because we too are America. Poignant images of social justice also mark the final night, we'll march the south. culminating in a powerful tribute to one of the party's giants, the late Congressman John Lewis. Glory. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Wilmington, Delaware. Some dates to keep in mind about this year's election. If you don't want to vote in person because of the pandemic, you can request an absentee ballot here in Arkansas. The deadline to request an absentee ballot is October 27th. Early voting starts October 19th, and the general election is on November 3rd. 
The social distancing part of this pandemic has left a lot of people feeling lonely, especially those in assisted living facilities. But tonight, Erica Ferrando shows us how a simple letter can be someone's reason to smile. Whether it's about drag racing, sports, faith, or soap operas, these nursing home residents have a lot to share. They just need someone to share it with. It would give me something to do. Get me active. Since March, 71 year old Van Sims has only spoken with his family from a distance. Through the window. Through the window? What's that like? I didn't like it. And for someone who has a lot to say with a lot of jokes to tell. What are y'all laughing at? The isolation hasn't been easy. It gets very lonely. But now he and some other residents at Greenbrier Community Care Center in Slidell are about to make a few new friends. Since they're not able to go out right now, we're hoping that having contact with somebody in the community, um, they, they, they still feel a part of it. Lauren Lee is marketing director at Greenbrier. We actually saw um, a, another facility in Texas that um, had good success with the program, so we thought we'd try. Monday in a Facebook post, they requested pen pals for their residents, and based on the number of comments and shares, they're expecting a flood of letters soon. Some are already on the way. I expect there to be a ton of mail. I expect the residents to be very surprised at the um, the, the outpour. Right now, about 10 residents are asking for pen pals, but Administrator Corey Cottonbrook expects the rest of the residents to follow. I would like every single resident to receive a letter. That's my goal. Sims wants to talk about his passions, like drag racing and hunting. I drove a truck for 30 years from coast to coast. Being someone's pen pal will give him something to look forward to. Have somebody to communicate with and just have somebody to reach out. Somebody to reach out. A simple request that means a lot. Erica Ferrando, Eyewitness News.